Hi. Good to see you all again. Yeah. Um, so my name is Angie Meyer. I, um, just to give you a little brief history about myself, um, I grew up in Southwest Virginia. Um, I like to call it God's country. Uh, in the mountains in Appalachia, it was awesome. Um, and I grew up in a auction family. So I have been in and surrounded around auctions my entire life. Um, grew up doing it. My father, uh, my grandfather did real estate and uh, my dad and we all did it as a family doing estates and, and uh, house liquidations and all that good stuff. Um, a lot has changed and I learned a lot uh, by getting out of the family business and coming this way uh, for sure on how to do things. Um, but we'll go into all that later. I met my husband Craig at the, uh, the I'm sure y'all have talked about conventions and whatnot. So the National Convention, they hold it in a different city every year. Just so happened in 2000, it was held in Norfolk. My dad was entering the contest there. They have an auctioneer contest every year in, uh, at the convention. And Craig had come up, and he was working for Mike Jones at the time, and he had come up to enter the contest. And long story short, we uh, met in a dueling piano bar and moved to Texas. And we've been married 20 years now. We have four kids. Um, I started out in the auction industry in Texas here as a block clerk. Um, at the auto auctions that y'all were at. I worked about seven a week at the time. And uh, so I was working one of the fastest lanes on the block I mean, that we had at the auction. And I went in for a race because I was, wasn't making top pay and I felt like I deserved it because I was working one of the hardest lanes. And uh, they wouldn't give me my $10 raise. And so I was like, you know what? <laughs> and in the interim before this though, uh, Craig and I, I would clerk for Craig. And uh, you know, I just started taking notice of things that was going on on the block and you know, what was going on in the ring and, and the correlation between the auctioneer and the ringman talking to each other and things that just kind of looking and watching how the auction works. And I decided that I wanted to start working the floor and I wanted to be a ringman. And uh, which of course, you know, the car sales, we're still back in the 1950 mentality when it comes to women being in the industry. And so that was gonna be hard. I felt like it was gonna be almost insurmountable uh, because here I was being a block clerk and then saying that I wanted to get on the floor and start ringing. Um, but I had somebody actually give me a chance. Went to school in 03, uh, started working the floor probably in mm, 06 or 06, I guess. Um, and I worked the floor for probably about seven years before I got my chance on the microphone. Um, and then I'm finally on the mic full time and I work five car sales a week, um, all, in the, all in the wholesale um, industry like y'all were at yesterday. Absolutely love what I do, it's super fun. And um, so I went to, uh, I love competitions. I had went to my first competition in 2005. I entered our state rookie competition and I was eight months pregnant at the time. So me and Levi, we won. And I was, uh, awesome. that was fantastic, yes. And uh, so uh, my husband and I, we won the world competition as a team in 07. And anyway, I love competitions. I go to a bunch of them. I love to be a participant of those, so I encourage y'all to get into that if, once y'all get out of here because you will meet some of your best friends in the industry. It's such a network, and uh, so I encourage you to do that. I'm also the uh, current president of our Texas Auctioneer Association. So is everybody from Texas? Everybody pretty much is from Texas. So I am... Got it. Oh, got it. Oh, Virginia, Kansas, Where are you Michigan. from? Where are you from? Fredericksburg, okay. I was in Roanoke uh, a week and a half ago. Though. Yeah, all right. I was up there for Christmas. Nice. Uh, yeah. Actually, the uh, Virginia uh, Auction Association. It was held in Roanoke. I saw that. Yeah. In the, uh, in the hotel there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I live about 40 miles south of that, so where I grew up. So. It is pretty country. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's just a brief overview of of me and my life. Um, so. I did say I, I got to do mention my four kids. I do have four kids, 22, 20, 18, and 16, two boys, two girls, and that's that. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're getting into the wonderful and exciting world of your auction management and clerking. Get ready. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so when I was telling you that I grew up in the industry, so I, uh, I always did office work with my mom. So I was always doing the registration, always doing the, we had, my parents owned an auto auction, so Believe it or not, I never had any aspirations of being on the floor or being an auctioneer when I was growing up. I was always in the back with my, uh, working in the, the uh, clerical side of things, clerking there and whatnot. So I'm so happy that I do have that basics. But um, please pay attention. I know y'all have had a long week, but this is literally the most vital part of what you've got going on. If, when you start out doing your um, own auctions yourself and making your own companies, doing your own thing, 
it does not matter how much magic you create on that microphone if your office is not intact and your clerk is not in sync with you it's all for naught right because if nobody's keeping record of anything then it's for nothing okay so first off so your first your first thing in your auction office is your presentation right that is the first thing that your buyers see when they come up so you have to think about just picture in your mind how many options you've gone to as a buyer yourself right and how they how you were greeted when you come in um, what the dress of the staff was how they had their act together you know did they look like they had their act together or did they not your first impression it's hard to ever get that back right your first impression is your first impression of them and if they leave a bad taste in your mouth then you know it's not going to be you're not it's going to be hard to get that business back right so think about that when you're hiring your staff right so if you have a if you hire your staff and you have come somebody come up and they would say i want to register and you have this guy as being your face of your company at this point right because mm -hmm. you haven't seen it right y'all go in and see people that act like that right and you're yeah. just like oh my god you're almost like a burden to them right and you're there to spend money in a new business right or you have this girl what does her face say lights out clues she has no idea what's going on she is just as good. she don't even know where she's at or you have this girl, right? So there's you. She's friendly looking, right? She looks approachable. She looks like she would know what's going on. And if she doesn't know what's going on, she's going to be able to find somebody that can help you, right? Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, I mean, those are kind of silly examples, but not really, because in today's world, it is difficult to find people that want to work, A, and B, that give a crap about what, you're, what you've got going on, right, in the grand scheme of things. So hire accordingly in that regard. You want your staff and yourself to dress professionally. I was at an auto auction today and I work for the biggest wholesaler in the country. It, his name is John Wolf and his company is called Give Me the Vent. Literally the biggest we had. Uh, he, he alone runs five lanes at Dallas Mannheim and we sold, we had 1,246 cars solely his today, right? So my lane alone, I sell high lines and exotics and imports and I probably did I don't know, I would probably say $15 million in sales today, maybe more than that. I don't even know. I never see all the numbers on it. However, I feel like you need to look the part that you're going to sell $15 million worth of it, right? I mean, yeah, I've got jeans on or whatnot, but I feel like I try to look like I have my act together in some regard. My rep on the blog, it wasn't my normal guy. Usually I work with the owner of the company. But today my rep, he rolls up and he's in a pair of jogging bridges and a sweatshirt and he does not look like he is the part. And I'm thinking, you know, he's the face of a company as well because when the dealers come in, I didn't feel like we were real, well represented in our attire. And of course we're behind the block, but you know what I mean? Just having that mentality of you always want to put your best foot forward, always want to have clean clothes on, make sure you comb your hair, make sure you brush your teeth. And it sounds silly to even have to tell adults that, yeah, but, but you do. <laughs> and, and you have to make sure that your staff is following in line with you in that regard because they are a reflection of you. They are the people that they are going to talk about, right? When somebody says, well, how was the auction? They'd be like, you know what? The registration lady was a total bitch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want them to have that, you know, that impression of you and your company. At the auto auction, are the staff yours or are they the auto auction? They are the auto auctions. So the way that the auto auctions work is every lane, there are so many different lanes, but basically you have a seller that you're selling for, but we're also under the umbrella of Manheim. So everybody just comes to the auction to do their business, basically. So the auction itself, they go out and they try to procure some of the cars, really, but not really, because the dealers are responsible for getting their inventory in there. And the auction's got different aspects that they do. They'll do CRs for you, and they'll do paint and body for you and all that. They have all those things available there. But ultimately, uh, when you're an auctioneer like we are coming up, we're a contract auctioneer. So you're basically your own boss, and, and you work for the guy that you're selling for. You work for your seller. So the auto company says they want you, they hire you specifically? The auto auction hires us, yes. But if, but some dealers, I mean, some dealers can request. So I was requested to go on John Wolf's block. So uh, they moved me accordingly to wherever they, they want they want us, I guess, basically. And then you, then you find your home. Um, so make sure your uh, staff is dressed, they're friendly and they're dressed professionally. That's that's huge. A smile goes a long way. You know, if somebody looks like a sourpuss, you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna kill you. I cannot tell you how much customer relations, customer service is such a thing that should not it should it, you shouldn't have to expect it from people that work for you, especially if you're paying them. But you need to uh, just make sure that that is being taken care of in your in your business. Your office staff needs to be confident and knowledgeable. 
I haven't done my presentation here in a while, so okay, here we go. <laughs> Your person, it needs to be professional, uh, friendly, confident, and knowledgeable. Okay, they need to know what terms of the auction are going to be at your registration desk. Everything that you are trying to convey to the buyer needs to be as, as black and white as you can possibly do. I do a lot of signage in my office. So, so if we're taking cash, check, MasterCard, Visa, if you're going to take a wire transfer, if you're going to do a bank letter. Does everybody know what a bank letter is? No. Okay. If you don't know what a bank letter is, it's really silly, honestly, because... It basically is saying that you ask your customers to give a bank letter of guarantee so you would take checks, right? Okay. So your bank letter is a statement, a letter from the bank saying that John Smith has got X amount of dollars in his bank account, which sounds great in theory, right? So they give you the bank letter and then you know that they are able to spend $30,000 at your auction and it's not going to be a problem. Well, the part that's silly about it is because it's all just smoke and mirrors because John Smith can get the letter for $30,000 and have that in his hand and then he can go take $30,000 out of his account and <laughs> you know what I mean? So okay. it's, it's silly in my opinion. Um, but they need to know the terms of the auction. They also need to know the flow of the auction. So I can't tell you how many times, you know, when you do your registration, we get a catalog that's got all the printed lot numbers on it with the item descriptions and what, whatever. And then we have our staff say, okay, we're going to start with lot number one. It's going to start over here in this corner and it's going to flow this way. They're going to have to know the flow of the auction because there may be something that lot number 100 that somebody's interested in. They don't really care anything about the first hundred lots, but they're going to know when the crowd starts moving that way where they're going to be, right? In their full order, you can do your auctions any way you want to do them. Some people just set things up and they clerk on the fly the entire time and they don't pre-number anything. I don't recommend that because people need order. They need structure. They need to be able to follow some type of guideline of what you've got going on with your auction. And all of this, so everything I'm telling y'all, I, I kind of go back and forth, I guess, a bit because everything I'm telling you to expect for your auction registration is something that you need to know and expect when you're setting up an auction yourself. If your auction does not flow, it does not make any sense. I'm not sure if y'all have gone over this, so I may be reiterating something that another auctioneer or instructor told you. But it doesn't make any sense if you have lot number one in this corner and you go all the way to lot number 50 in this corner, then to come all the way and start back here at lot number 51 because you've got to work your crowd. you got to know where, you know, if you've got your crowd, you don't want 50 people being like, all right, come on up here. Now we're up here doing this and trying to move it. You need to have lot number 50 and then 51 be the very next item on the row and then come back this way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or do like a perimeter of your auction and then have your tables lined up but so your crowd can follow with you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure your auction personnel, your office personnel, that they understand the flow of the auction as well as the ringmen that are going to be working for you need to understand the flow of the auction. Um, I think Craig was supposed to come here in a bit as well and we were going to work on ringing today but I'm not sure if our timeline is going to work out. But one thing to keep in mind if we don't get to ringing is that if you have three ringmen that you've hired, say you're doing a farm sell out and you've got your tools lined up, right? Tool lot, tool lot, tool lot, tool lot, tool lot, right? It, it is time is money and that is the most important thing. Keeping that momentum going, keeping that flow going, letting everybody just have that sense of hustle, have, to have that sense of urgency. If I say lot number one is this cup, lot number two is this, lot number three is this notepad, right? A lot number one, we're holding it up. I've got three ringmen here, we're all working together, and everybody's trying to take bids. Yep, yep, yep. All right, and then they're like, all right, well, lot number two. Lot number two. What's lot number two? Oh, this, a lot number two, lot number two, lot number, oh, here's lot number two, lot number two. Here we go. If you take 30 seconds every single item, how often, if you have a 500 lot item that uh, auction that day, how much time is that that you're adding on that is unnecessary? Yeah. Your ringman need to work and, and you need to have somebody spotting. You need to have somebody next slot up, next slot up. They got to be prepared, next slot up. And then have your third person writing the lot number, the uh, buyer number on your tags so it helps in the end. When you have lots left over and you're like, ah, oh, who bought lot number three? You can go back to lot number three and say, oh, it's right here. Bidder number 156 got it. Writing your, uh, writing your buyer number on your lot tags helps in the way of your clerking or your, your bidders being able to find the correct stuff on your checkout when you have your checkout guys checking off the list to say, yes, this was what they got for sure because people will be like, oh, I didn't buy, you know, they would have bought a $20 chain and they end up with a $400 air compressor and be like, oh, that wasn't mine. You know what I mean? So people are sneaky. And don't drink it. On the flow of the auction, is that why you kick out the car before you're finished selling it? And then you bring the next one in? Because or, or, like Richie Brothers does that too, but I was always told that's because they don't want you looking at it too long. 
Oh, well, interesting. No, I remember do that. <laughs> no, uh, basically, no, the reason we say next car up or whatever is because it's that flow. It's that when you are on the auction block, you are creating that urgency and can, and that fire of I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to bid, I've got to bid, and then the next one, need next one, next slot, next slot. Keeping that fire built. Once you can build a fire in the, on the block, and I mean, you kind of and keep it fan where that sense of urgency and that that feeling of I got to be in now kind of thing is is what is what drives it and that's when magic happens on the block right that's when if you just hum around hum around hum around hum around hum around you want to shoot yourself because you know it just <laughs> nobody will get on like let's bid like today it was a nightmare I'll share that later but um Anyway, just basically keeping that sense of urgency, keeping that sense of hustle, basically, is what you just don't want to let any time lag. Because people, we are in an age now, and it has changed so much. I'm 42 years old, 43 years old. Yeah. And I don't even, know, I don't even realize I'm old. But how much has things changed in the last damn 10 years, right? And the people, people want things now. They don't want to wait on anything. You can't even get somebody to wait five minutes anymore just to be like, hey, I need a second to figure it out. They don't want it. Everybody has immediate immediate gratification. They want it. So you can't let, if you're trying to do business in a live setting, you can't let any grass grow under the feet, basically. Right? Okay, let me uh, find my deal. Okay, so with that, so for the auction, you need, they also need to know what the loadout process is. And every auction that you're going to do, guys, when y'all get out of here, you are your own boss. You negotiate whatever you want to negotiate. You decide whether you want to have people help and load out. I personally think it is a good customer service. I personally think that it's good in order to keep things lined out where you don't have items missing. I think that there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, just aren't able. You know, maybe you've got somebody that's older that can't pick up the 50 pound thing to put it in their truck. I just think it's a nice gesture to have. But you, we need to know. And if and if we're not going to help with loadout because of liability issues, if y'all don't want to get into all that, then you need to have signs up saying you're responsible for loading your own stuff, right? Okay. Um, you also, uh, I'm not we're going to get the branding, but also, so if you have an auction, so say you're selling out a mechanical shop and you've got whatever, things are hardwired into the building itself, you need to make sure that they're either disconnected prior to the auction, but if you want to show that it works, make sure that you have a disconnect date and then have the buyer be able to pick it up a day or afterwards or something like that. You know what I mean? you, you got to figure that if you want it. Same thing with plumbing. The worst thing you want to do or the worst thing that could happen to you is have something that's hooked up with water or whatnot and then they decide they're going to disconnect it. The buyer is going to disconnect it itself and then the building floods out and it's not your building. You know what I mean? you got to think. Yeah. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. You're <laughs> All right, um, and you also need, okay, so if you're going to incorporate, so right now, in my opinion, if you are having a live auction, you, you have got to incorporate your internet bidding along with it, whether it be proxy bid, whether it be high bid, whether it be whatever, you need to incorporate some type of internet bidding with it because not only does it increase uh, your marketing, but it also increases the buyers that you are going to try to get to come to the auction period to, see, to, to get with that. Um, so in your registration process, you need to be able to differentiate who those online buyers are when you're settling out your books and who's not, right? So I always typically will do whatever buyer numbers I'm starting with. If I start with 100, it doesn't matter. Your numbers are only for your use. It doesn't make a difference to anybody else, right? But I usually will do like my internet bidders, I'll make them a thousand. So buyer number 1,000 is going to be my first internet bidder, buyer number 1,001, you know what I mean? Because like I said, your numbers are only for you anyway. Um, if you're doing an online, if you're doing incorporating the online with you, every one of those platforms charges you in order to put that online. So I haven't done a proxy, I haven't done an outside sale in a minute, but the last time that I did, I put it on proxy bid. I think proxy bid charged like $500 just to put your auction online with them. Um, and then you are charged for every auction item that is sold online with them. <coughs> Increase your buyer's premium. So if you have a buyer's premium on site that's 10%, Make your buyer's premium online like 15% because you're getting charged a commission on whatever you sell and you don't want to go in the hole by offering the service and, and increasing your sales, right? So you got to think outside of the box on everything that charges you. The online platform is going to charge you. Your credit cards are going to charge you. You know, everything. So when we're talking about bank letters and what you're willing to take as payment, been in the business a long time, I maybe have had two checks. Maybe that didn't clear. Uh, through the, you know what I mean? Like saying that you, I wouldn't, I, I personally am not scared of taking checks. 
And if you do take checks, well, I don't know nowadays, who knows, but if you do take checks, I mean, if you don't take checks and you do a credit card fee, then of course they're gonna charge those fees on you. But if you take check, then it's pretty much like cash and then you're not charged the fees. And you gotta think about it on a grander scale, right? So what if you have an awesome auction and somebody spends 15 grand, well, if the credit card is gonna charge you 3% of that, yeah. you know what I mean? It adds up fast. Yeah. I mean, and that takes money out of your pocket. Because yeah. that's ultimately, you wanna make as much money as you possibly can. Um, you will want to make sure that you put your auction signs out prior to the registration. So if you have auction day and your office is open at 8 o'clock on registration, you want to have your signs out by 7.15, I would say, because you're going to have people that are going to be early um, so they can make sure that they can get to your auction. Um, so, and brand your company with everything. Brand yourself. Branding is huge because when they see that, they may not remember your name. They not, may not may remember anything about but they will remember how they were treated and they'll remember what your logo is and both to associate you with something, right? Or whatever your brand is. Put it on everything. Put it on your pins. Put it on your all your signage. Put it on your lot tags. I know Mike probably has gone over lot tags. He's got his, put it on your lot tags. All the information that would be um, pertinent to being able to find you again, right? Either put your phone number on there or put your website on there some way. Not only your not only your logo, but put some all your information on there that you can get to be able to make, uh, to be able to find you again on your banners, all that stuff. Angie? Yes, sir. Just a quick question. Sure. And just stop me if it's something you're going to cover later. But oh, let's hear it. As far as the, um, having proxy bid and the equipment facts or mm -hmm. whatever, um, what is the protocol like of, of taking the bid off the internet? I mean, like, are you looking at it or are you just waiting for a yup or? Uh, well, that all depends on how you set it up. So uh, a lot of the online, so his question was, how do you take the bids from the internet if you're doing it in a live setting with your live bidders, right? So if you were running the platform yourself, then you would have your staff just yell whenever they were doing it. If you don't have the means to be able to set that up yourself, then you can call in and they will actually will operate it for you. And so it's almost like a relay. So it, it when I'm talking about keeping time and time is money and all that bunch of stuff, it does add some time to it. I mean, you could have somebody on the phone with one of their operators and then they're running everything for you and they'll say yes we got a bid and sometimes it runs faster than what is being relayed so they may say oh i've got fifty dollars you're like no the bid's not fifty dollars it's 65 right now you know what i mean so there's a little bit right. of, of that i mean like the equipment i go to farm auctions all the time and you know they have like two or three different platforms mm -hmm. going on they're sitting there so that they're probably just talking to the auctioneer mm -hmm. i mean to me it looked like most most of the auctioneers are looking at a computer screen too mm -hmm. so that are they looking here and looking there um well it all depends on how you're wired but what all you have going on because i mean some people may all have it all on one screen where they have all three different platforms up where they can see if it flashed in because most all i don't know if you noticed yesterday at the auction when the internet flashes in you know it does a different color and they are do a color and then if some there's another bidder it'll be a different color so you can kind of differentiate you know that there is a different bidder going on that would so, across from you guys That's yes sir so you yes, sir. Yeah. so you're watching that then yeah watch it well in the car sales for sure because it's right in front of me and like today I sold uh, 200 cars today and I did not have a single inline bidder. I had one single inline bidder that bought two cars for me. Everything was online. Which it seems like it's like Really? Was, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to shoot myself sometimes because it is just my Oh my gosh. You had one spot yeah, on that screen yesterday, right? No, uh, so th that's a, we'll get into that, but they, that's a, thank God for Metro Auto Auction and all of our independent sales in the Metroplex. All the big guys, Mannheim and Odessa, they did away with all of our ringmen. Um, so now I feel like one of those, um, you know, the monkey or the uh, one man bands that can play the harmonica and play the drums and do all that. That's pretty much what we're at right now because we have a headset on. They took our block clerks away. We have a headset on talking to our block clerks. We have uh, nobody on the floor helping us with our ringing. And so if we have the computer screen plus your dealer talking to you, your rep, and that's a whole other animal. The cowboy guy with the bandana, he. That is the, one of the best ringmen in the in the industry. He was ringing. Right? He was working the floor, yes, sir. And I, if y'all stuck around long enough, and the little bit that y'all were there, Clint probably put together four deals. That would not have happened if he had not been on the floor. Four, yeah. four, four cars sold. That after the fact he went. Yeah, he, he yeah. sold. We saw that. My expedition. I mean, my yeah, my King Ranch expedition. Yeah, because yeah, you stopped and you said, "I got good news and bad news." And before you even got to that, he was already yeah. down there selling. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. That's exactly what you did. We'll talk about that though. That's 
Uh, that's off the of this, but I'm happy to, we'll talk about that in a sec for sure, because it is awesome. Okay, so you need to figure out in your bid registration what you want to capture from your bidders, okay? So you want to have everything appropriate signage uh, for your terms of sale. So if you have your payments are, your as is, where is, no warranty, no guarantee, if your pickup day is, X whatever, you want to have all that up there. Because if you charge a buyer's premium and you do not have it posted, then they're gonna you're gonna have a buyer come up and pay out. You're like, what? A buyer's premium? I didn't know anything about that. And they're gonna owe you a thousand dollars in buyer's premiums, and you're gonna be like, yeah, you did. And but <laughs> you know, but have them sign too. I always have them sign at the end. But you want to figure out what uh, when they're registering, so they agree to the terms of your sale, so you kind of foolproof yourself there. But you need to know what information you want from your bidders. Name, address, phone number, email. Your, if they have a tax ID number, if they have a, a dealer number or whatever, you want to find out how they heard about your auction because you want to find out how your advertising worked, right? It used to be that we would do newspaper. It used to be we would do. We still do some radio, but so much things, so many things have changed now with the whole advertising process and marketing yourself process um, that you want to find out what works because advertising is expensive. Flyers. We used to mail out mailers. Good Lord. I mean, that's the thing of the past. How much junk mail do you get? You don't even oh, look yeah, at it anymore. Look you just it. dump it because it's just, but we, I do that. I do it every single time I get the mail. I'm like, nah, not interested. I don't even look at it because I know it's just an advertising of something, but you've got to think about it on your side of things. How much did it cost you to produce it? You know, if you do those little nice little gloss well, slicky things, they're what, 50 cent a piece plus you yeah. got your postage on top of it. So you want to find out what advertising worked. Was it your sign out front? Was it word of mouth? Was it, you know, um, so be able to, to, to take all that in. I do not work for AuctionFlex. AuctionFlex is one of the best programs I have found for being able to run an auction and have everything all in a one-stop shop there for uh, your program. I mean, or, or, or capturing all your information. Is that Flex with an F? Or yep, or with an F. Mm -hmm. AuctionFlex. And uh, I'll talk to you more about that in a bit as well. But you capture, you can capture every bit of this and you can capture their email address. You definitely want to get their email because it doesn't cost you anything to email and you can make your own flyer and send that out. It's just things to think outside of the box of what works and the cheapest, best way you can do it. Right? Uh, let's see. All right. Moving along. Okay. So the clerking options, old school tickets or the computer program. Regardless if you keep a, if you do a computer program, I always keep a backup of everything that I'm clerked because it never, it's never, it hasn't happened to me yet, but it will where, you know, but it's not going to happen to me because I am old school and I've got to have everything written down, but the power is going to go out and your computer is going to crash and you're not going to know what the heck happened, right? I always keep a paper backup of all your clerk lots. Also, always keep a voice recorder of your of your auction itself. I mean, just put it on your speaker box. It don't have to be. It don't have to be nothing fancy. Just get you a little tape recorder or a recorder. You don't have to be tape anymore. That's the old name. Technology has moved way too fast for me. If y'all can tell, it's just like. Oh. But anyway, get you a video, uh, audio recorder and just set it on there. And not only does it help you if you have power outage or you have something go wrong, but if you have a bitter disagree with what a price of something is so if somebody comes up to check out and they're like oh you john smith you owe me fifty dollars and he was like no i didn't pay fifty dollars pay i paid forty dollars first i'll go back to my hard clerk sheets to be able to say well no we have it right here it's here and, and that's what it says and if they still bucket then you can go back um and all your stuff is time uh is time stamped or whatever in the system when you put it in so you can go back to that time on your audio recorder and be able to listen to it and so you can and then sometimes you might be wrong, but probably not. <laughs> People just like to, they, th they get tricked up sometimes. A lot of the times it's on the, if it's 40, 45, because they're thinking that they were, you know, a, the less number, like they were on the 40. Yeah, on the 40 versus. They really want oh, okay. Angie, when you said keep a paper backup, are you just like, if you have run a computer program, just have it available in case something happens. So I, I use Flex, like I said, I don't work for them, but that's what I'm going to base everything that I tell you on off of them. You can print your clerk in tickets off of those. So um, so I, you pre-enter all your information in the system as your lot numbers. So it would be lot number one. It'll give a description of it. You can put your reserves in there if you have any reserves. You can put any notes about it if you have that or whatever. But then you can print those off. So you will have them for your clerk. And everything's like lined out, lot number one or whatever, so it'll have a description there for you. 
and the beauty of it is is it can be noted so that if the auctioneer doesn't see it on the screen or doesn't see it on their because they have an auction catalog as well if they don't see it on the catalog then the clerk can be like oh that has three miles unknown or, or whatever like oh it's it's got a broken leg or whatever you know what i mean like you can help your clerk can help keep your auctioneer straight on on kind of descriptions and or announcements that might need to be made made on a lot basically but so i print those out so i have the system it's got a wireless component to it so you can have your whole office set up and then it's got your where the auctions being held at it'll wirelessly transmit because before you know you can have your uh, office set up with computers which is fine and run tickets but what always happens is somebody comes to pay out and then they have you know like right they away. missed it in the interim you know something's got missed in the shuffle and you think you've got everybody and then you go to check everybody out at the end and consolidate and and close out your sale and you're missing a payment or two because it didn't make it into the office before so the wireless clerking it really helps be able to um just not that happened it doesn't happen like that it's really really uh, immediate which is nice okay so your clerking is absolutely the most important part of the auction once again i told you it does not matter how much magic is made on the microphone if nobody has recorded it correctly or get the price right so you know, they uh the clerking requirements what i require my clerk i make them have a catalog so they know the flow of the auction when you're hiring a clerk they have got to be a multitasker they've got to be able to listen to the auctioneer they got to be able to write down they got to be able to type in the system they got to be able to answer questions because people even though you tell them hey don't talk to the clerk they talk to the clerk um they have to understand how the items are being sold um and so we're going to go over that in a sec and then also keep an audio recording of the auction itself so when i say how their items are being sold one money if everything is being sold for one money that is the item itself the lot is sold for one price doesn't matter how much stuff is in the lot right this lot is one money a choice lot the bidder has the option of picking as many items as they want from what is being offered so if you do a choice lot i'm offering choice of items number one through three lot number one lot number two lot number three high bidder choice does everybody understand that okay that bidder the high bidder has the choice of taking all three lots if they wanted at the price that they got okay. or they can take number two they can take lot number two they don't have to take lot number one they don't have to take lot number three they can take lot number two if they want they can take two and three they can take one and three whatever combination in this situation if they do not take them all and they just pick one of the lots out you want to ask hey back up bidder do you want that lot for the same price a lot of, because you once again speed of the auction so you don't have to go back and you know resell it or whatnot a lot of the times the backup bidder will take the other lots um, once again when you're setting up your auction you want to make sure that you have group, like items grouped together to be able to sell together right so you want to sell uh, you want to sell your best item first in my opinion uh, because you don't want somebody coming after so say you've got three zero return riding line mowers right mm -hmm. you don't want somebody waiting out because they feel like that they're going to be able to get you want to sell your first one first because that's going to be the highest price one and then they still may you know buy the second one or buy the third one but you don't want to wait till the very end because they may not give it on the first or the second one because they're waiting on the third one and then they don't bid on it you, you know does that make sense they're not going to bid on the first two because they're waiting on the third one when they think it's going to be the better one but they're not going to have a chance of getting it so sell your highest item first and then you know your next and next and next yes sir how do you keep the crowd there if you sell your good items first well it depends on what are we talking about yeah well well you're going to group everything like like items together right so i would have a row of tractors i mean you don't have to be if you've got a farm auction you've got 50 tractors it doesn't have to be all 50 tractors at once right in a row but i would sell i mean i probably would put them all together and sell them together but you know maybe put 10 tractors and then do another whatever lots you know what i mean and then another 10 tractors to keep them there um, if you have a like an estate sale that you're doing but you have some raw items um, you can always the rules are yours so you can always say at 12 noon we're going to take a break and we're going to sell the real estate and we're going to sell the card and we're going to sell the four wheel you know what i mean so you want because time is money once again and it is hard to keep them with you and anymore anymore it's hard to get people to even come out to an auction period you know what i mean because everybody just wants to sit in their underwear online which i don't get but yeah i know yeah because people are socially ignorant yeah yeah that's a whole nother that's another conversation we're gonna be here all night talking um okay so time's money everybody understand time's money yep 
If you don't understand time somebody, because we're fixing to have a clerk in test, so if y'all don't understand time somebody, time somebody is one one of the items in the lot is sold for ten dollars, and if there's five lots, the rest of them is going to be five times that ten dollar bid, right? Okay. If you're buying lots one whatever number one through seven, those are several lots being sold at the same time. They can be sold times the money, or they can be sold as all one money. So an example of this is like uh, if you were selling box lots, right? You can, if you have a whole line of box lots and you're like, all right, guys, we're selling because it'll get down to that and you're doing $5 lots or whatever, um, it'll be where you just have just $5 to death and nobody's going to take five, they're not going to pay $5 anymore. In my opinion, if you can't get $5 for it, put something with it, right? Because it's just wasting everybody's time because you're not making that much commission on a dollar. <laughs> So, maybe put something with it. Don't bring five dollars. Bring something with it. So it may be lots. All right, guys, we're selling lots number one hundred three one ten. You've already choiced them out. You've already done all that. You've already times them out. However, you want to do that. So now this is just what's left over. Liquidate it. Just be done with it. Everybody understand that? Thanks. All right. Okay. Creating lots on the fly. Everybody understand what that means? So basically, you have your auction lots set up. We've done one three fifty. Well, we forgot, oh my goodness, here we are, we're around our corner, and there is a ladder in the corner that we forgot to lot and tag. So, there we go. Lot number, if you clerk on the fly, make it your closest lot number that you just did, your last lot number. Your numbers are only for you. It doesn't make a difference to anybody else. The bidders do not care if their lot number is 57 or 67, it don't matter. But just put an A lot to it. Right, so you would make that ladder 57A, and write it down, and your clerk clerks it on the fly. That way you are getting everything all the money in the room. Uh, <clears throat> all right, Adam sold on the whole bid. Does everybody understand what the whole bid is? No. Okay, so Adam sold on the whole bid. We did this, uh, we used to have a furniture auction, uh, an antique furniture sale. And so we would sell the furniture on the whole bid if it was like a matching suit. So it may be the chest of drawers, it might be the lingerie cabinet, it might be the bed, it might be whatever. You sell each piece individually and then you add all those items up, all the numbers up, add 10% to it, and then that is the new whole bid. So if somebody decides, okay, for instance, let's just say we have, for sake of math, we have five items, and the dresser, the bed, the nightstand, blah, 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 five, five furniture options, lots. They all sell for $100, right? So we have $500 each, so you bought a lot, you bought the first lot, you bought the second lot, you bought the third lot, fourth lot, fifth lot. Okay, each, everybody, all the, all the five lots have been sold to individual people. Okay. If you add them all up and it's $500 and you add 10% to it, it's going to take $550 to put the set back together. If somebody oh, says, yes, I'll take that, oh, yeah. 550 then everybody else is out. Your individual oh. lots don't matter anymore. It's oh. been put back on the whole. Okay. And I say this to say, well, it's, it's funny, we were teaching it worldwide, and somebody was like, well, when would you use this? And I was like, well, really, the only time I've used it was in was in my antique auction school, I mean, auction house that we used to have. But then I got to going down the road, and I was like, I'm so dumb. Multi-par auctions, multi-par land auctions. That's all this is. Oh, multi-par yeah. is this is a multi. Yeah. Items on the whole is a multi-par auction. With the tracks he was talking and about. And it is a money-making son of a bitch. It is. It really <laughs> is. He showed us that. Sold them on each of those individual. Yep. You don't say so. No. Nope. You just say, uh, you just say, uh, well, you can say it's sold on the whole. You can say it's sold on the whole bid. I bet you don't. I don't think you say sold really. No, you just say buyer number two five seven for fifty dollars on the hold or on the whole. What if two of those bidders both are willing to pay five fifty for the whole I'm set? Sure you can keep going. Oh up. yeah, I'm sure That's yeah, the beauty yeah, of it. Yeah, question. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's why now, now options on. Then you can rake it up more. Now, now the one. So if she, you know, it just makes it just makes the set bring more, or it makes the land bring more. Yeah. Because you've got to put it together, and if you want it, you got to buy the bullet and, and okay. pay for pay it. For it. So yeah, the land it. is. The land is huge. I use the uh, analogy of, of the furniture auction because that's where we use it the most. But geez, Louise, land, game changer, game changer, money making, game changer. Yes. But you're when welcome. You're doing that, you have to, when you're doing that, though, you can't say sold after you do that. Yeah, yeah. You right. don't say sold. No, you just say, um, I don't know how I close that out, really. I mean, yeah. 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 What is the highest bid? Bids are. I'm going to suspend the bid. I'm going to suspend the bid. Buyer number, we're going to suspend the bid. Buyer number 444 at $50. And then, you know, then you're going to put it back on the whole. On the whole. 
So, but it keeps it together. And I swear, if y'all have never seen a multi part land auction, watch your YouTube or something on it because you'll be like, this is where I'm going to make some money. <laughs> Another example to give you on using that, they do it all the time in farm auctions. You have a $150,000 combine and uh, you know, $25,000 head and then another 25,000 corn head. Mm -hmm. They sell the com they sell the combine first and then mm -hmm. sell the two heads mm -hmm. and, and then they, they put it all together. Okay. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah, that. Makes okay. Sense. Um make sure also too that your clerk knows any announcements on the lot uh, if there was any reserve on the lot because just to keep everything in checks and balances with your auctioneer. Everybody's on the same page. All right. This is where we're going to have fun. Okay. I did not say this earlier, so I did I did kind of say it. So this is what I grew up with. This is at my mom and dad's, really, but this is um, the little pigeon cave, chicken cave, whatever you want to call it. Awesome. We're going to give y'all clerking tickets, old school clerking tickets that Lori is going to give out. And I'll take one, Lori, and I'll start doing mine. Oh, you're so good, Lori. That's killing it. She is. I like to take care of Killing it. Okay. So, when you get your... I'll just talk louder. Okay. So, when you get your, your sheet, right? This is your hard clerk sheets. It has top copy, carbon copy, mm -hmm. and then it's got your hard ticket copy on the back, right? When you have this, if this is how you're going to start your auction and how you're going to do business, your... Lot number goes in this corner on the top. You can see that. Okay. The description of whatever it is goes next. Okay. Your buyer's number goes back next. Mm -hmm. Quantity, and then what it sold for, and then your total. If you are doing times a lot or whatever, don't try to get your clerk to do the math. If they're good, they can. But just make sure your office does the math for them because they can do the math. But make sure your office is double checking the math because you don't want them to get tricked up because that would cost you money, right? The clerk would number each sheet. This, of course, would be number one. Next sheet would be number two. That's so you can kind of timeline yourself. If you need to go back and look at anything, you can kind of tell what order things were sold in. Um, and then this on the top is how much the actual sheet totaled for um, and the sale date. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now, this top copy would be the copy for your records. Okay. The yellow copy goes to your seller. And this copy here goes to your buyer, right? So, for sake of... Um, I am going to, I don't have to write on that. I can just do it like this. Okay. So say your first one, when these come to the office, in the auction, office, the total, the, your office personnel would add up everything, add tax to it if it needs to be taxed, uh, which it is going to be need taxed because Uncle Sam's got to get their cut. So then you separate them. It's very very sophisticated. Separate them like this. And then you put them, uh, so if buyer number 101 bought these two lots, then they would go in the one hole, right? If buyer number 201 bought, they would go in the one hole, right? Because you got to keep everything together. And then when they come to check out, you say, what's your number, sir? And they say, oh, I'm 201. You pull out and you go through and you find 201, all of this stuff. What my mom used to do was keep everybody uh, rubber banded together or paper clipped together with a running total of what they actually had. So it would kind of speed up the process a little bit. Um, so you don't have, they don't have to wait on you to refigure everything. Um, I thought my husband, Craig says that he thought we were going to get divorced over it. I don't think it was that bad, but I fought him tooth and nail on trying to go to a computer because I was like, I grew up in this, I can do all this, it's nothing to it, blah, blah, blah. The look of a computer and the program, it makes you look more professional, A. It helps you keep together better all of your records. Yeah. It helps you be able to do a mailer better. It helps you be able to total your auction better. Auction Flex has got a, um, on when you do your consigners, you can do a drop down menu. And if you are doing a graduated scale on your commission rates, I mean, that's something, and it takes the, it takes the uh, error, it takes the human error out of trying to do your figuring. On your on your deal so this works there's nothing wrong with this at all but we are in 2022 and it's not with the times you know what I mean it's it, I was gonna say that it's uh, we're in 2022 a laptop costs 500 bucks 
for the program that this runs. If you make if you make a, a designate you some clerking computers, they do not have to be top of the uh, top of the line yeah. anything. They're running one program, an auction flex program. It is only one main, and then the rest of them are called slave computers. They don't even do anything without the main brain being attached to them. So get you one good one, and the rest of them it doesn't matter because they're just on that on that network. Um, but I have a I have a company that I before I started working the floor and all that I was using my knowledge and my upbringing and I created a company called Auction Squad and I basically can make any auctioneer basically look like rock stars because we would come in and I come in with my with my staff and my crew and I have four auction computers set up, laptops, I have two printers, I have the program, I have the wireless clerking. If an auctioneer doesn't have the means or doesn't know how, I can do the auction setup for them. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying anything other than just your presentation is everything and how people perceive you first impressions is everything so just make yourself best fit forward um, i have a guy that i literally talked to last week and he's in a panic because he has got a contract with the city and he's promised him that he can do internet bidding and the person that he thought it was handling the internet bidding has not handled anything with the internet bidding and he's in a jam because he has no idea how to do it and he's done this he's done it this way and i'm like I wish you'd have called me earlier. You know what I mean? I'd been able to help you. I was actually booked on the date of his auction, but I mean, he's in a jam. And he, we, I just always keep going back to we're in 2022. This thing here is just a thing of the past anymore. Unfortunately, it sucks. But what's your site called? What is it? Auction Squad. Auction Squad. Auction Squad. Squad. I don't even have a website up anymore. I don't even. <laughs> But it was it, it was a game changer. But it also, you know, it helped me stay relevant in the auction industry because I was able, I wasn't an auctioneer at the time. I wasn't a ringman at the time, but I knew what I knew. You know what I mean? I know how to do what I know how to do. And thinking outside of the box to be able to make some money. Craig and I have four kids and I was trying to do my part, you know, to help out or whatnot. But like I said, computer costs 500 bucks. Fight the bullet and do it. Auction Flex, I do not work for Auction Flex, but Auction Flex, you can buy their program outright, but you don't want to do that because they're constantly making upgrades and whatnot to it. Mm -hmm. But you get on there, it's a one month subscription. You get charged every month. If you're not doing any sales, you can turn your subscription off. Oh, that's good. And then turn your subscription back on. Very much, you, I have struggles with uh, technology. I've told y'all this already. And if I can figure it out, anybody can. It's, so it's good. the Auction Flex, is it compatible with like these online so auction flex has their own online platform called high bid oh. and so that that is high bid and do we have somebody Lori? does somebody come in from auction flex doing no, no? okay um so they have actually if y'all want to uh when you get back and do anything they have a 30-day free trial that you can even play around with it and do your thing with it uh but the high bid is their internet platform you can run other platforms, but just that's what I was saying. Give your bidders a number of like a thousand or two thousand. So if I was running equipment facts and I was running a uh, uh, proxy bid or whatever, I may designate my thousand numbers would be my proxy bid. My two thousand numbers might be equipment facts. My three thousand, you know what I mean? Whatever platform, so you can keep it straight. Okay. So y'all, uh, any questions on how to fill out your form? Because that's what we're fixing to have a clerking test. See how good y'all can listen. Everybody clear on how to fill it out? Pretty sure. We are going to run this like I, you are my clerk, and we're running the auction, right? Lot number one, lot number two, we're going to have uh, 20 lots. In this, we're going to have an example of every lot that we have talked about on how to sell it. I will tell you in my chant how we're going to sell it. I just got to listen, okay? Listen to what we're doing. There's only 12, 12 tickets. Um, well, some of them are... Uh, Okay. We'll make it work. Yes, ma'am. I think. There's only 12 tickets on there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I know. I was like, 20? I'm, I'm already Short. lost. <laughs> Shorts or both? Yeah, we're choosing some. Hmm. Maybe they, I've never used American Auction Academy as one. We just had the money. Okay. Hmm. 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 Well, I'm going to give y'all another sheet because I don't want to I don't want to deviate from my... Uh, Sweet. Actually, does everybody get a notepad? Yeah. With them? yeah. All right. So if we run off the sheet, just make it on your notepad because that would have to happen in a real setting anyway, right? Okay. If you ran out of sheets. So. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, and you're going to be graded. And if you fail, you're going to fail. 
Well, we'll camera ball right now. No. No, no. Okay. Can we get everybody here? Yeah. Okay. We're back. What's going on? I think so. Okay. I'm cheating off of you. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go over it at the end as a class. We are selling out a mechanic shop. Okay? Okay. All right. Ready? Here we go. I'm gonna give it all right, guys. I'm gonna give it a lot of number ones. I'm gonna give it a roll into a box. I'm gonna give it a hundred. I'm gonna give it a 950. I'm gonna give it a 150. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two hundred. I'm gonna give it a 950. I'm gonna give it a 250. I'm gonna give it a 250. I'm gonna give it a 225. I'm gonna give it a 225. I'm gonna give it a 225. So two hundred. I'm gonna give it a bag number 144. Bag number 144. The next lot up. Lot number two. It's gonna be a pallet jack. I'm gonna give it a hundred. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna give it a three. 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 Three now four. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it now four. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it three fifty. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it now three and a half. I'm gonna give it three twenty five. I'm gonna give it now fifty. I'm gonna give it three fifty now seventy five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it three seventy five. I'm gonna give it three seventy five. So three hundred fifty dollars. Five hundred one one one. Five hundred one one one. I'm gonna give it eleven three seven. I'm gonna give it a seven eleven riches. It's gonna be two times the money. I'm gonna give it a twenty five thirty five. I'm gonna give it a thirty five forty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it two times the money. I'm gonna give it a fifty five. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it a fifty five. Sixty five. I'm gonna give it a fifty five. Sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a sixty five. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a
Itself, I would put 13 and then dash dash 16 so you know that it goes all the way through it. That's one money and one card for that. See, that's where I, I, mean, I put six, seven, eight, nine. On that's okay, though, yeah, right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, if you're if you're doing a one money lot and we sold like last number 13 through 16, if you do, so basically it wouldn't work. But you want you want to have everything on one ticket right. in your system. You would just oh. put them all together because. You would have our uh, price on it was $130, so you would have to do the math on the lots to individually individualize them out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's 130 times four. No, it would be it's 130 for the entire lot. For the entire lot. 13, okay. 16, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh yeah, quantity yeah. one. So yeah, again, I'm so, not so, you correct. You sold six, seven, eight at the same price. Yep, hang on, we're gonna go over a test. Yeah. We're gonna go. Let's go over it all together. Yes. Yeah, we'll go over it all together. <laughs> okay, did anybody struggle? Yeah. Yeah. No, that wasn't that bad. Was it because you couldn't understand me, or because it was just fast, or well, yeah. if, it, if it we were great. if we were clerking, I would have stopped you at least for a second it, to yeah. get the right because I missed a couple of descriptions. Yeah. I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Have trouble understanding me? Some you can say I didn't. No, I didn't think so. It sounded like a machine gun. No, you're just you're just what you're you just doing? fast, and I. I you know what you're saying. I, didn't get it in time. You know? She doesn't have a filler word. She's just rolling. I did. She's uh, rolling. I started out with Vitadat. Vitadat? Vitadat was my filler. And then it kind of morphed into Vitadat because I changed my B to a V because I felt like the more the more you can keep your mm -hmm. syllables or whatever on the tip of your tongue yeah. and, and not do any like, like pull or anything that blows out a lot of air, keep your keep it right on the tip of your tongue. So Vitadat worked good for me because it just was, was right there. And then I've just sold a bunch and it's just kind of morphed into yeah. whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is. Uh, yeah, and I'm chewing gum. And you got, I got, any of y'all get me like, y'all got like the hillbilly plus the Texas conversion accent going on? I'm, that's always yeah. fun to do. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going over our fucking test. Lot number one sold for $200 to yeah. buyer number 144. Lot number two sold for three hundred and fifty dollars yeah. to buyer number one one one. Are you, you calling out the you, description? Yeah, call oh, yeah, yeah, yeah give us a description. description. Okay. I, I missed a bunch of. All right, lot number one, rolling tool box, yep. two hundred dollars, one four four. Lot number two, pallet jack, yep. three hundred fifty dollars, buyer number one one one. 
By number three, set of lug wrenches. Two times the money, $55 a piece. Uh, number one, two, three. Okay. And the, what is it? Was it 65? No. 35, uh, no, 55? 55. Times two. Yep, times two, yep. Uh, then so number four. I'm sorry. So the total. So that means there's two yeah. in quantity. But don't total, I wouldn't, don't total on your clerk, don't have your clerks total for you. No? Yeah. Okay. Because it'd be, uh, they can if they're good, but you know what I mean? Like, you just want to make sure if you trust them. But you want to always have your office double check everything. That's another Not thing, guys, with, with what I've said with keep your what? backup parking tickets. I one time. Because oh. I enter everything in the system. Everything is coming through wirelessly, right? But then when, so your office registration is super busy in the beginning of the auction yeah. and super busy at the end of the auction. And the rest of the time, they're kind of just looking around and keeping oh. busy. Them. Keep them checks and balances, checks and balances. Get we your get your clerk sheets from yeah, the sale rank it. and have your office go back through and make sure that you've got it on the right number, that you've got it on the right price. You know what I mean? Like just duck, checks and balance yourself. Did you miss I, all I, those? I <clears throat> Okay, oh, no. next up, lot number four was our floor creeper. Yeah. Uh, $130, bar number 444. Four, four. <laughs> I realize I put floor crapper. <laughs> <laughs> lot number five is going to be a large lot of tire plugs. It was 20 of them. So that would be your quantity 20, but it was all one money. So you're not times anything out, right? For $35, bar number 125. We had an A lot, 5A was our ladder in the corner. Yeah. $125 to bar number 143. 16 foot ladder. Uh, lot six, seven, eight, nine were all swamp coolers, yep. and they were choice lots. The first one sold for eight hundred to buy her one, two, three. That's Second one eight hundred dollars one five five. Second one eight hundred dollars one four four. The fourth one for five hundred dollars one two three. And it's crazy when you're doing. I will tell you this: when you're doing choice lots, and the backup backup bidder's like, no, nah, I don't want to give that, and you rack it again. I've seen them bring more than what the original one brought, right? Because yeah. they, I don't know, people are crazy. They are literally crazy. But, or bring the same price when you could have saved yourself a good minute and a half by going through all that. But <sighs> anyway, so just just so you know, get ready for that because it'll happen. You'll just be like, what is going on? But it happens. Uh, all right, lot number 10, uh, your tire machine, seventeen fifty to buyer number one, two, three. Yep. Lot number 11, your wheel balancer, $600, buyer number 149. Yeah. Lot number 12, four jack, 175 to 444. Lots 13 through 16 was wrenches that were one money. That means all those lots were loaded for, together for one money for $130 to buyer number 111. Lot 17 was a set of rims for $500 by uh, lot number, buyer number 144. What, what Wait, that was a set of rims or a tire set. ramp set? Nope, set of rims. Oh, shit. I, I, I thought tire that. ramps. I know. We heard tire, tire ramps. ramps. I heard tire yeah. ramps. See, that's where that hit Yeah. That's where that hit the thing. All right. Yes, I missed one. I missed one. You put the same thing. Yeah. Seven rams, five hundred dollars, one four four. We are cheating off each other. You can't say you put this. Oh, no, I'm just saying that we both heard tires. <laughs> we know the same thing. The same thing now, but they're cheating off each other, so they're going. Yes, sir. Was your clerk ticket already pre-written, or were you writing with us? Uh, I could have written it with you, but I've already, I've already had my. She was calling, so she wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm a multitasker. <laughs> I can do it. I'm I've done it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, all right, lot number 18 it was our filters. Uh, that was $75 by number 111. And lot number 19 was our security system that yeah. went to a different consigner. Yeah. And I threw that different consigner out there because when you're doing farm sales and whatnot, you will have different consigners in your auction. So, I mean, not that you're double checking everything that you have, but you may have something added from a consigner that got there late or whatever. Just make sure your clerk's got that down. So that's over twenty two fifty to buy number one twenty five. Just that's that. That's so that you don't charge them sales tax. Uh, what is that? You, you wouldn't charge that one sales tax because it's a resale. What? Everybody. No, I'm talking oh. about I'm talking consigners. I'm talking about who's actually putting stuff in your auction to oh, okay. to sell. sell. Yeah. So like an exa example, example, like example. Yeah. When I had my auction, guys, great. I had all the one numbers, like. One one to one thousand was all my dad's stuff. That's all the awesome five thousand, all the five thousand numbers was mine. Hang on, we need that. I told you this is the wonderful world of clerking in office here. That was Where fun was though. Where that note consigner change though? I would have. Well, I'll in the system, 
in the system, you would have that already, if you use a computer system, then you already have their, uh, their consigners are already in there, so you would just know that number. Because you'll have that, you'll have that all done before. So they're all coded, so say, I consign to the auction, I'm consigner number 200, you'll be consigner 201, you would already know who your consigners were in, the, in that cell. But I mean, if I was manual clerking. Just, I would note it by, I would make like a star asterisk, and make sure that the clerk knew, the office knew, to change that in the system inside, okay. if you're doing it like that, yeah. Yes, sir. If you're doing it like that, it can be, but the only thing is, have you a backup, like another paper, if something gets out of whack, right? So, so if you'd already written that, if you numbered all yours, and then we had that A lot pop up, then you're going to be off one. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just easier to do it as you go. It's the easiest just to get a system. For real. Okay, uh, so I was just saying about the utilizing your office staff in the beginning, super busy in the end, super busy in the interim. They're not really doing anything. Have them take these sheets, your clerking sheets that you're hard clerking, and make them match it to your what you have already entered the computer. So uh, for payout. Um, and then also make sure that there's silent auction. If you have a silent auction going on, because I don't know what business you are going to get into, you may end up doing everything for a uh, benefit auction. You may have live and silent. You may have silent auction at your actual auction, whatever. Just make sure if you're doing a pedal race, just make sure that your office staff has everything entered in the system and double check your clerk and tickets. I better check out. Uh, make sure that your tax and buyer's premium is calculated correctly, that you give the correct change back. It is unbelievable how many people cannot count change. It's terrifying, really. It really is terrifying. Uh, make sure that your staff is competent and they know at least how to give change back, which right now it's, it's sad to say that they can't do it, but it also makes me rage, rage, because you have a computer, all you gotta do is put the money in there and it tells you how much change you get back. There's no room for a mistake. It doesn't make any sense to have mistakes in your office, especially when you, I joke around a lot, but we don't joke about money. <laughs> when you get getting, getting turned up on money. Uh, make sure that your payment types are recorded correctly. Once again, uh, in Auction Flex, you can do a, when you pay out, when you cash out your buyer, it gives you a drop down menu to say if they paid cash, check, credit card, wire transfer, whatever you've got going. So at the end, when you reconcile your books, you know what you need to be looking for if your accounts are, wrong, are off, if you're looking for money somewhere. We're fixing to do that real quick. Were we at time for that as well? Yeah. Okay. We'll make time. It's fast. I'll be fast. Um, uh, then call to collect your accounts receivables immediately. Do not let any grass grow under this because people get buyer's remorse and people get forgetful. They have very, very uh, interesting memories, right? So call them at the end of the auction. If you have outstanding stuff, lots number 25 and, and 53 and whatever, or buyer number 101 and 106 haven't been paid, call them. They may still be at the auction. They can just come in. I would definitely recommend if they have left the auction, make sure you ask them for a credit card so they'll pay you right then because your job is just to collect your money because if the merchandise is gone, you're left holding the bag. You're responsible for your consigner, right? So you want to make sure that you get all that accounted for. Uh, things to consider when you are having your auctions, guys. I mean, because how many people, who just wants to be a contract auctioneer? Y'all going to go into business for yourself? Everybody pretty much want to have your own company? Yeah. 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 Okay. So listen, take note. And you're welcome. Credit cards, <laughs> they charge a fee. Some of cash plat platforms charge a fee to put it online and for each item sold. Brand everything with your information. Keep everything simple and easy to understand. Use free ads, live social media posts, inexpensive direct bidder reach, Google AdWords. And what we've done in the past with uh, larger options, or any option that we have outside sales, create a website strictly for that auction and drive all of your auction traffic to that. If they want information on that, we had a we had a classic car auction one time, and it was Cowtown Cowtown Classics, I think, is what we named it, and that's what was basically the name of our auction. Cowtown Classics is what we used for our Google words. Cowtown Classics was everything that we did, drove them to the website that we could put everything up there. It'd be in all one spot. Uh, pay all your staff at the end of the day. It just keeps morale up and makes everybody happy because it is a long day. Y'all know auctions are long days, and. Don't, auction, good help is hard to find, and you, if you find them, keep them, and pay them accordingly. I mean, I, so I pay, I pay all my office staff between, depending on how long the sale is, between $250 and $500 for my girls in the office. The guys in the office, I don't really have that many guys that work for me in the office, but pay them accordingly because it, they're handling your money. They're the ones that matter. I mean, you can pay, you want to have an awesome auctioneer, or you want to be your own auction, like, auctioneer, that's perfect. 
you want to have good ringman on the floor or pay good ringman on the floor whatever you want to do with that regard but make sure you you, you get what you pay for i guess is what i'm going to say uh, you got 14 days in the state of texas to pay your consigner um, that's from the date of your auction of course everybody wants everything immediately so uh, the sooner that you can do that the better and i don't even know that you should wait it out 14 days because you get a reputation for being a slow pay a slow pay you know uh, auction house or auction year peerage you don't want that especially when i tell you that everybody is such immediate they want immediate gratification if they if they gave you a hundred thousand dollars worth of their merchandise to sell for them they expect a hundred thousand dollars in their account or you know more than that of course in their account in two days <laughs> Really, they expect that you don't have to by law, but um, what is sure by what is by law? Fourteen days. Fourteen days, and all of your money has to go into an escrow account. What if an they escrow don't? Account what if they at don't? your bank is a non-interest-bearing account. You cannot make money on somebody else's money like that. What if they don't? Everybody understand that? Yeah. What if they don't pay you within the fourteen days? Um. Well, then you're, you can file the T T D L R. They can file on you. And they can bad mouth you, word of mouth, any reputations, everything. Well, so. Well, I, I just had an auction. And they owed me about mm, seven hundred and fifty thousand. I didn't get paid for. Mm, I didn't get paid for all of it for about two months. Did you go kick their ass? I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. <laughs> I feel like I never got. No, I'm just I know. No, they, no, I wouldn't. That's a, that is like a legal. That's a legal thing. That's. That's that's prosecutable, I would think, if you if they hold your money for that long personally. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm a lot of. I got a lot of hats, but attorney is not one. I don't know that rule. Uh, maybe so, but you know, you got to have it in a non-interest bearing account. Pay all your sales tax. Don't get tricked up with Uncle Sam. You're welcome. <laughs> and perception is reality, and your reputation and integrity is everything. Make sure you have a clear directional signage to your auction. We already did that. There's still your stupid questions, guys. Don't be afraid to ask because all this stuff I just is second nature to me. So there may be things that I blew by that I think that you already know. But if you don't, raise your hand. Yes, sir. Um, now I go back to it. Uh, what, the taking the clerking on there is it? They're sitting there clerking. Are they on the computer and they're just typing in like what we just did, but they just type it on the computer? It's already pre-done. So in Flex, so you would go prior to the auction, right? Because you, you want to go in and you're going to take your pictures and you're going to line your auction lots out and you're going to go ahead prior to anything, everything. When you're setting your auction up, you set your auction up first and then you go back through and you lot and tag your auction. So when you lot and tag, that means you have somebody on the computer lotting in the items in the system, in the software, and you have somebody putting stickers on the item with the correct number, right? So everybody's, everything's in, in place. Auction items are already pre in there. Um, then for auction day, you're gonna print your catalogs, which can get expensive. So you can also just uh, have an email that you can, or uh, it can be on your website and you can drive people to the website to be able to get the catalog if you want. Um, but everybody can have a catalog so they can follow along. Um, and then if you want to clerk it on the fly, you can clerk on the fly. But when you're clerking at the auction and you have it, when you type lot number one, the item description comes in. And it just gives you a field for putting the price in the bidder number. So when you get done, somebody's just going to type it in. So yeah, unless you go ahead, you can either run tickets to the office and they do it like that. Or you can invest in that wireless, which is like, I think at the time that I bought it, it was like $700. But it's game changer. Game changer in speed, in hassle at the end. All of that it, it makes a big difference yes sir what do y'all do with the uh cars that don't sell at auction you bring them to the next auction or, uh, we don't have any we we have nothing to do with the cars at the auction so the, when the dealers bring their auction in all those dealers are individual businesses right they bring the auction they bring their cars to the auction to sell depending on who they are and what they are they're put in whatever lane they're in if they don't sell then they have the ability to run it in the next auction or they can pull it out and try it at another auction uh dallas metro in the, in the metroplex there are i'll say uh, two three uh there are six seven uh, i think about seven dealer auctions um, Dallas Mannheim runs Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Metro runs Tuesday, Friday. That's where y'all went yesterday. They run Tuesday, Friday. Alliance runs Wednesday. America's Auto Auctions runs Tuesday, Thursday. So, I mean, there's probably, what, 12 auctions that they can hit up in the... Do you yeah. work at different ones? 
I do. I work at Metro on Tuesdays, uh, Dallas Mannheim on Wednesdays, DFW Mannheim on Thursdays, America's Auction on Tuesday afternoons, and Waco Alliance on Fridays. But you're off on the weekends. And, and Mondays. And Mondays. So that's when I handle other stuff. Yeah. We got a lot. We got we have a hunting business. We got lots going on. Okay, so go right real quick because it is 20 till, and I know we've got our student auction and all that, but I want to go over the other important part. Okay. And then we're going to do this fast as well. If I can find it. Hmm. I'm not sure where it's at. Lori, did I maybe have that on? Yeah, the settlement one. I think that was a guys this is the other and this is the most okay so you've done your auction you gathered your money that's how to balance your auction Got it. Oh, no. <clears throat> and we're going through this fast and if y'all have any questions on it we can uh, go talk about it how to close your auction balancing your auction paying your consigners and paying yourself this is the important stuff this is how you make your money all right so you're gonna have to have your startup cash this is what I recommend you can do whatever you want to with that um, you just basically want to make change and don't get stressed out about how much money it takes in the beginning of how much you decide to start up because it's coming right back to you so you can actually if your auction is on Saturday get your startup cash out of um, Friday you can put it back in your account on Monday and you're not really out anything so if you feel like your auction is going to need more change than that then do it and, and keep in mind when people are paying you with cash you know they're going to pay you in 20s they're going to pay you in hundreds they're going to pay you in stuff so you'll get other monies back but just to be able to make change that's just what i usually typically do okay so this auction that we just did the total price with our buyer's premium and tax was three hundred forty six thousand six hundred four dollars and 89 cents that's what we collected okay you have a wire transfer that's going to be coming in for twenty thousand one hundred eighty three dollars you had 227,496.54 in credit cards. You had 74,646.89 in checks. 24,279.73 in uh, cash. And you're going to have an accounts receivable. So this one here is what you would have saved in your cash. This is what your actual cash is. This is what your accounts receivables are. Everybody understand what accounts receivable is? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Something that has not been paid for. Yeah. Something that has not been paid yet. All of these figures are in this total okay all right accounts are simple there you go got that okay so you're going to <clears throat> when you figure in your consigner check your total hammer price because once again this total included includes your tax and your buyer's premium keep that in mind okay your total hammer price for what all items sold at the auction was 293 111.97 okay deductions this is what you're going to take out of your consigner check when I told you earlier that y'all are the boss, you decide whatever you're going to do when you talk to your clients, right? You negotiate everything. In this auction, we decided on 10% commission rate, an advertising expense of $7,000 that I paid first, right? So I covered the advertising. I get it back at the end of my consigner check. This is what I'm taking out of his check before I pay him. I'm, paying, I'm recouping my expenses, right? Taking out the $7,000, taking out my commission. He also agreed to pay for auction setup. That was thirty-two hundred dollars. So the total due my consigner is two fifty-three six hundred seventy-eight. Everybody understand that, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So what you're taking out of your consigner check? It's all depending upon what your agreement is, with what you decide to do with your consigner, who you're doing the auction for. All of that is negotiable. You may ask for him to have the advertising money up front, 
you may you may be eating this option set up this just this particular option that we did fees to remember before paying yourself you got to have your credit card fees so you can't look at that total and be like oh my god i made so much money on this option which that was a good option and you are going to make some good money but you've got to consider your credit card fees of that fee that was taken out all of that credit card total you have five thousand one hundred eighteen dollars in credit card fees because that when i tell you you got to be conscious of your of your math of your uh, expenses right <coughs> you got five thousand dollars right off the bat that's going to be out of your pocket and also on your state texas state is uh 0.825 percent based on that based on your hammer price of 293 111 we're just for sake of math everything was taxable that's how much you got to pay uncle sam or governor abbott or whoever we are in the, what we're doing in texas auction payday okay so your commission from the consigner was twenty nine thousand. your buyer's premium was twenty nine thousand three eleven nineteen. total made at the auction you covered you cleared when well, you didn't really clear it yet Fifty-eight thousand six twenty-two thirty-eight. Consigner commission, buyer's premium. When people say that they don't need to pay a bad charge of buyer's premium, why not? Tell me why you wouldn't. I don't know. Anyway, so twenty-nine thousand three eleven nineteen. Because now this is the thing to think about. In everything, it's your business. It's your negotiation. It's whatever you want to do. You may be from a part of the world that didn't charge buyer's premium. I suggest it's twenty twenty-two. You need to implement it. But you would do all of that work and you would have $29,000 in your pocket versus, you know what I mean, not in your pocket yet because we haven't got there. But, you know what I mean, that whole other half of the auction would be gone. All right. Your sale day labor was $8,000. So you're taking your 58, 622, 38. Sale day labor, 8,000. Credit card fees, 51, 18, 67. Your auction payday was $45,000, 503, 71. Is it pretty standard practice to charge them the credit card fees? No, well, that's got it's gotten weird because it used to be against the law to charge a credit card fee, so you had to call it a uh, then you had to call it a cash discount. Convenience. It was the fee. It was the fee, but if you pay cash, then it's cash discount. So it was all your worry. Now nobody cares, and everybody charges a, a fee. So yes, you can charge extra. You can charge. I mean, now that you know, nobody bucks it anymore, but you could do thirteen percent or fourteen percent if you pay with a credit card versus. Absolutely. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, you don't want to be dragging around with any of that. You got lots more. You got lots more to deal with. All right. Questions? Everybody understand how to close your auction? Because this is big. And if you don't have anybody that knows how to close your auction, you need to understand this. Because in my opinion, I literally have worked every aspect of the auction industry, from food sales in the cafe with my grandma to registration, to setting up a sale, to closing out a sale, to after a sale, load out, all of it. You, you as an auctioneer, to be a total well-rounded auctioneer, you've got to understand every component of the business. And this is one of it. A lot of men are like, and I'm sorry guys, but a lot of men are like, oh, that's women's work, I don't need to understand it. When it comes to money, you better understand it. Because not everybody is honest as you are, and not everybody has got your best interests at heart. And if you're relying on Sally Sue, and Sally Sue has a mortgage that she's got to pay, and she doesn't care what's going on with you, right? She, how much of this, if you don't understand what's going on with this, then you say that she could just say, oh, so, you know what, that auction was crazy. It was $40,000, that's you. Here you go, hard and take that back, you know what I mean? People will do it. So, you know, yes, sir. Oh, uh, so I have a question about storage auctions. Okay. Um, <laughs> clerks, uh, what do they do? Or like, well, yeah, because if you're walking around a uh, storage area and walking from storage spot to storage spot, yep. do you have like a little desk you carry around for the clerk? Uh, they usually are in the back of a pickup truck or they may walk it, but they just have a clipboard and they, they will just do like, locker room whatever the locker room number is and that's instead of lot number that is your lot number would be the locker number or your uh, stall or whatever of that storage building yeah anybody else yep um do you have any suggestions or is there such thing as like a clerking cl school like to send my wife or somebody to do we just did it you gotta go to mama taylor all that <laughs> this is crash course can we get your slide <laughs> Oh, that's a really fast crash course, though, you know. I will, uh, I'll be happy for you to take this, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you ever. I don't technically have a, we don't have an auction school or a clerking school. There should be. Right. But uh, basically, and I mean, that's what that's the thing, guys. I mean, if you're not familiar with, with this side of things, it's, it's, it's a lot. So if you wanted uh, to, 
Did, so I got another question or something to get your input. Yeah. I got a place in Illinois that I've been going for years that I know the auctioneer. <laughs> I want to send my wife to go volunteer to work mm -hmm. work for him, clerking and yeah. in the office. That's yeah. probably the best way to learn. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Trial by fire for sure. Yes, sir. Can we go back to the startup cash flow? Yep. Sure. Thank you. I know we blew through that. Okay, so they don't get bogged down on, on these as much because even if you ran out of 20s, you can make it up with your 10s or your 5s. You know what I mean? Like if you had to make change or you may have to ask somebody for change, whatever, to be able to break $100. Like don't get bogged down, but you want to be prepared for whatever you're going to need. Do you have to have a separate escrow account at the bank for every auction that you're doing? Like no, sir. Two or three? No. Okay, you, mm -hmm. can, you can join us. Excuse me, yes, sir. And attorney doesn't have to be over or anything like that. Like, no. you put that escrow Yep. Account. And what I, what I will do um, also is, because you can't, um, I would have another, I think it's easy and better to have two accounts. So have two escrow accounts. One escrow account that you keep your tax money in and one, and one escrow account that you keep your consigner money in, right? So when you pay out of your consigner money, whatever you've got left over, go ahead and put that money so you don't get tempted to be like, oh, I can just use that. Go ahead and put that money over into the account that you know you're going to have to pay into the state. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, everybody, any questions on how it's paid, how this works? All right. All in. All in, all done. I think you're having a break, and student auction is, okay. So I'm ready to be like, charge. <laughs> so that's it, guys. That's the end of the world. You're going to have a break. When you leave the room, take your books and everything with you. Everything. We want to kind of keep the tables all clean. And if you buy items and you have room to put them, you can leave, you know, mints or whatever. But as far as your books and papers and all that, we just want it to be nice and clean. Uh, Mike, what time? You want them back at what time? Let's try it, everybody, back in 30 minutes. 30. So about 520.